Let's talk about the book of Revelation. We're in this series at Stillwater's Church called The Lamb, the Lion, and the Warrior King. And we're talking about the book of Revelation. Of course, the book of Revelation must be interpreted through. The entire first chapter is about this, and there are many chapters and verses throughout the book of Revelation that tell us this. you got to see it as about Jesus, not about events. If you don't interpret the book of Revelation through the lens that Jesus wins and that every part of this was designed to encourage believers that were suffering and going through difficult times, then you'll miss out on the book of Revelation and what it means. And it can be very scary, very daunting. Uh, But God did not intend for it to be that. He wants you to see that even against injustice and even against evil governments and false religion and the devil himself, and all injustice. Jesus eventually judges that. He wins, and his love and grace for believers wins out. And so it's very important that we remember that. Well, I've been going through uh, these supplemental videos talking about certain aspects or thoughts about the book of Revelation or things that may be contained in it. There's no way I have enough time on Sunday morning to be able to deal with all these things. So each week I'm taking a little portion and talking about it for a few minutes. Today, I'm going to talk about something that is very common, uh, something that a lot of people know about, even people that know nothing about the Bible, nothing about the book of Revelation, nothing about what Jesus teaches. They know what this is. They've heard of this and they associate it with evil. And it is the number 666. So what in the world does 666 mean? Well, we've watched it in movies. We see common culture talk about it. Everyone knows that that is associated with evil or the devil or something bad. And so let's actually talk about what this actually is. And I'm going to give you some differing viewpoints. There are some people that view this differently than others, and both have good scriptural evidence and both are are Bible-believing views or viewpoints, okay? So just because it's not completely agreed upon universally, don't think that a person is a heretic because they don't believe exactly like you do, okay? So It's important that we come back to the main points that Jesus wins, that he's coming again, that he's going to judge evil uh, so that we understand uh, what is being taught in the book of Revelation. So the number six is the number of man. That's important that you know. We're going to talk about the number seven in an upcoming video and what that means. There are many groupings of seven in the book of Revelation. There's the seven seals, the seven bowls, uh, and the seven judgments, and we could go on and on. So the number seven is significant because the number seven, what does it represent? It represents perfection or God. It represents that completion uh, that we find in God himself. The number six is a number of incompletion. Remember in Romans, it says that all have sinned and all fall short of God's divine standard, of God's glory. Well, the number six, that's what it indicates, that man is incomplete. He falls short. We have sin, okay? So the number six is a number of incompletion. It is a number of man. It is a number that describes that we fall short. So the mysterious number 666 is complete incompletion. Um, It is total incompletion. So what does this number mean and what has it meant throughout history? Um, Well, there's some very bizarre things that people have said about it. And uh, so I'm going to read through some of these, but it comes from Revelation chapter 13, verse 18. And this is talking about um, the beast And um, so it it talks about his number, and I'm going to talk about the beast in an upcoming episode. Uh, There's actually a couple different ones in the book of Revelation. So, but Revelation 13, verse 18, it says, This calls for wisdom. 
let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Well, there are some possible interpretations here, and I want to go through this with you. Two very prominent interpretations, especially in the first, second, and third centuries and and the early church, uh, that this number 666 was a particular code, and it referred to particular rulers. In other words, because it was written in code, it was written to avoid persecution. And so uh, there's a couple of these. The the first one uh, posits that the letters of the alphabet are given numerical values. And this is from the Hebrew alphabet, that each of these letters is given a numerical value. And so the letters making up a, a person's name uh, in Hebrew, it equals Nero Caesar. Nero Caesar. We all know that Nero was one of the rulers of Rome. Okay, so there are some that believe this referred to Nero or to one of the Caesars. Okay, so that was taking the Hebrew language, making the Hebrews equivalent to, to numbers or those numbers equivalent to letters, and that's how they came up with that name. Then another group did it in Greek. You recall that the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. The New Testament is written in Greek. And the Greek letters spell out the name of Domitian. Okay, he was an emperor of Rome. And so there are two different groups that believe that uh, that this number, 666, equaled the name of a Roman emperor. And people that believe this, uh, they believe that um, that these are historical events; they're not prophetic events. And uh, they believe that uh, maybe John, who wrote the Book of Revelation, did this to avoid persecution. That's not very likely, since he had already been uh, persecuted. He had they tried to boil him alive in a cauldron of oil, and he wouldn't burn, and so they exiled him to Patmos, it's unlikely that John was trying to avoid persecution because he was talking to believers and telling them they were going to go through persecution. And Jesus himself, as he gave this message to John, said, hey, these believers are going to suffer persecution. So that's unlikely. But that was a very prominent thought that it was referring to either uh, one or the other of these Roman emperors. Uh, John may have used this as a code to uh, avoid being arrested um, or avoid sedition. There are some people that believe that. And once again, I don't necessarily believe that is likely because of um, the fact that he had already been persecuted and he was talking about Jesus being with you during persecution. I've already talked about what the number seven stands for and that it is uh, the number of perfection, the number of God, the number of completeness, and that the number six stands for total imperfection, actually 666, total imperfection, the number of man, and uh, it is incomplete, uh, an incomplete man that is not complete unless he has God in his life. Now, John throughout the book of Revelation, uses numbers figuratively. So in other words, not every number that you read um, in the book of Revelation is necessarily hard and fast that that is this exact number. And I'll just give you an example. Uh, In Revelation chapter 14, where it talks about the 144,000 that have been sealed by Jesus Uh, these Jewish believers, these believers that are part of the family of God, well, that is a number that is a figurative number, okay? And and we see that uh, the triple sixes, 666, is most likely also intended to be a figurative number because that number comes right before the 144,000 number, 
the number 666, the number of God, meaning perfection, the number of God's people, they are complete with God, the number of God representing God himself versus the number of man and incompletion and not being whole and the number of man which represents evil or sin or the number of the beast. And the Bible w- will use this metaphor, the beast, to describe evil, uh, false religion, uh, and people that are not saved, people that uh, are against Christ, people that are anti-Christ, okay? So it's likely that John was using these numbers in a figurative manner. So the number 144,000 is figurative and represents the people of God who are complete in Christ, and the number 666 is a figurative number and represents uh, the enemy of God, the Antichrist, uh, false religion, and even people uh, who do not know Christ as their Savior. So um, it is an intentional contrast with 666 and 144,000. So chapter 15, verse 2, points further to the non-literal nature of the number 666, since it says there that the number of his name is equivalent um, to um, the beast and his image. Okay, so it's the same name. It says there in chapter uh, 15, verse 2, and also those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of his name, the number of his name. So it's likely that this represented the name of, you know, false religion, uh, the name of evil, of of evil governments, false governments, antichrist, everything that is against God. So um, it's important to note that it's highly likely that these numbers were figurative. Um, The numerical value in Hebrew of the Greek word beast is an interesting tidbit, is 666. So uh, when believers successfully resist the beast's deception, they avoid identification with the essence of his name, which is imperfection personified. And they are uh, to be identified uh, or to be identified with someone's name is equivalent of partaking of that person's character. And we see that in in chapter 2 of Revelation, verse 17, that believers that partake with Jesus Christ, that that believe on his name, they're partaking in his name. They partake of his character. And so uh, since the seal of the name of God is invisible, in other words, we don't see it. No one knows what it is, but we see that God seals us through our faith in him. And since this refers to a spiritual reality rather than a physical reality uh, for all true believers, then it's likely that that's also the case with the beast's number. In other words, uh, in chapter 13, verse 17, the mark and the name um, for unbelievers. Uh, So another view on this is that, uh, you know, that these, this number that the 666 is a literal real mark that is associated with maybe microchip technology or computer technology in some way and that it is implanted or uh, invisibly tattooed or visibly tattooed on people's forehead or their hand or whatever and so there is that view as well so these are some of the major views of what the number 666 means. Some believe it refers to a Roman emperor. Uh, Some believe that it is um, a a metaphorical, if you will, uh, a figurative number, just like most of the numbers in the book of Revelation are. And it represents those that take on the essence of the character of Jesus. They have his mark. And then the essence of the character of the beast and false religion and the devil and Satan and unbelievers, and that, in essence, they partake of the character of his name as well. And then, of course, the view that 666 is a literal number that people will take during the tribulation period. Well, I hope that answers some of your questions about the number 666. It's an interesting discussion, but let me just bring you back to the point 
that we need to make sure that we have charity with each other. There are some believers that have very strong opinions that the number 666 is literally going to be on people's hand or forehead or maybe in microchip technology and that the uh, the period of the tribulation is seven literal years and that there's the rapture of the church beforehand and the second coming of Christ and then the millennial reign afterwards. And there are many wonderful people that believe that, that have good scriptural evidence and that they're very strong believers. There are others that believe that this number is figurative. And once again, strong believers believe the word of God. They're not heretics. They believe this uh, can be supported by scripture and it can't. And then there are those that believe that this may be referred to one of the Roman emperors, okay? So these are differing views, but be gracious. Make sure that you have charity um, and believe that Jesus is coming again and that one day he's going to judge all false religion, all non-believers, the devil himself and all of his demons, false governments, evil governments, and that he will bring justice to us and to this earth, and it'll set everything back to its original order. Well, I hope you have a great day. I love you, and I hope to see you this Sunday at Stillwater's Church.